Woolwoolu! So it is a new week in DML and we've got some new dungeon stuff to do and mainly we have a new collection dragon to get our hands on this week in the form of Miss Debutante who as you can see is an epic with water, metal and fire elements and to get Debutante we need to get three dragons one from the dungeon, one from the daily bingos and Cowpoke being the dragon of the week, which I'll go to in a little bit more detail later. But before that, we have some arena updates. Ancient arena time! So, it's still season one in the brand new enchanted arena stuff. And uh, after this one battle, we will indeed be making our way up to the new Ancient League, who is the final part, who... Which is the final part. Apparently it's now a human being, which is interesting. But in the Ancient League, there is actually the chance to get pieces for a brand new dragon called Shinobi. And, you know, new legendary, new dragon. I want it. So that is our goal. But, you know, since the arena does reset quite often, the problem is actually getting there and getting the Shinobi pieces. But either way, that is this battle completed, and there we go. You have been promoted to a higher league. So it was a little bit um, buggy, but we're here. So now we have this very pretty ancient league symbol instead of the pretty divine one. And for this, we actually do get a duplicate sumo dragon. So, you know, sumo is a legendary shadow and light dragon. He used to be a very good dragon. But, you know, Divines, Ancients, so we'll, we'll, we'll take the dupe. But now when we go into this Ancient League, there is no higher tier than Ancient League. And these are the rewards that we can get. So we've got these special chests. We can get up to this many of the materials and five to six pieces of Shinobi for every chest opened. So he is a legendary Water and Shadow Dragon and a legendary so dcp and he just sort of like sticks out of his egg which creeps me out but new legendary which means of course we want to get as many pieces of him as we can so 14,800 plus this is what it looks like but you know i haven't spent any gems ideally you would use level ups to try and get bonus wins in here and also to try and get a very limited amount of arena gems but Overall, you know, the battles, most of the time we have at least one battle that isn't too difficult. But let's open up our first chest in this league. And indeed, there are our times five pieces of Shinobi and we need a hundred pieces. So it's going to take a while. It's going to take a while, maybe like two seasons worth of arena grinding. But hopefully next season when it comes out, everything's a little bit more fixed. Not, not bad. And people can actually get victories because I think I've been pretty lucky the last sort of week with these enchanted arena battles because not everyone's been able to do the fights but at the same time I do also have dragons that are capable of actually um, you know beating level 120s depends on what their turn order is but that is new ancient leak I did also go ahead and unlock Hornbill a few days ago through the Milestone Pass because, you know, I need Hornbill still and he's a birder, so I kind of wanted him, but it does mean that I have been breeding and breeding and breeding and uh, eventually we did see success for Mr. Hornbill, but man oh man, it's supposed to be a 10% chance to breed and I must have done at least 16 attempts on this guy. I don't know, game. You, you're really trying to mess with my head, I think. So coming back to debutante, like I mentioned before, we have three dragons in this collection that we'll need to actually get again and hatch because I've already got all three of these dragons, but you can see we need to get all of them again in order to unlock debutante, who is a very pretty looking dragon. And so the first dragon that you'll need to get is Memorial, who is a dragon you can get out of the dungeon chess which if you're trying to go for fun Deju, you'll probably be grinding those anyway. The other one is Fennec, who is the daily bingo reward dragon, which we'll check in a second. And Cowpoke is the dragon of the week. And so if you want to double check this Cowpoke, to breed him, you need to breed Armored plus Seed. And you can use DML Planner to double check on the breeding times and breeding odds for this. 
Again, super easy. We go on to here. 10 possible outcomes and Cowpoke has a 12 hour, 48 minute breeding time with VIP. Nice and simple to check. So that is Debutante. And coming back to Fennec as well, because again, those are the other two dragons. And in terms of the bingo, you'll see that for Fennec, you need to get a full house. And the pieces are going to be available like this, I'm assuming, every single day of this week. So you do need to be getting your hands on a duplicate Fennec. I've only got eight existing pieces for Fennec, so it's actually going to be really tight for me as well to try and get this dragon. So um, good luck with your bingo rolls. I hope that uh, it is kind to you. Might not be. But let's hope so but again with bingos make sure you've got the bingo board open and you're checking which numbers you need to land on and make sure you're trying to hit at least one of the numbers at every green tile because otherwise you'll have to do a lot of laps but you know aside from that log in get your purple chest get your epic chest whatever you need get your doubles do good stuff so aside from that we do also have information regarding the new dragon of the month and we did already know what the new Dragon of the Month was going to be, because it was in the Cartomancy collection, you could see it here. And it's going to be Mr. The Devil, who is a legendary Fire and Void Dragon. Very cool looking dragon, I like him. He has a pentagram on the front of his egg. But the combination of elements you'll need to use to get him are, again, also on DML Planner. And it's going to be Fire, Wind, Earth and Water. So if you do want to get your hands on The Devil, and there are a few different combinations you can use. They all have really, really low average misbreed times, but water plus tribal or any dragons with the same elements. So as you can see here, we've got prairie, mystic, elephant, owl, orc, harpy. Really good combo for newer players. There's also earth plus agnes, but I don't really suggest that. It's worse in every way. And then if you don't have any rares somehow, so elemental, clownfish, then you can also use lava plus ice, which is another option. Again, super low average misbreed time. It's not a crazy breed chance like the magician from this month, but you know, hopefully you should be able to get your hands on the devil, but maybe don't do it during ancient event because you know, you don't want to end up not getting the event points that you need. But that is this week in DML. Again, mainly it's just focusing on the rest of the ancient event. So, you know, the daily ancient event grinding, making sure you're getting all the points you can, making sure you get all the purple chests. There's also fun Deju to still go for for most players because, you know, unless you've got a full drop or crazy high drops, you're probably going to be grinding for fun Deju through the dungeon. Especially since dungeon last week was kind of... Eeh, yikes. So... The question really is, will we be grinding this dungeon week or the week after? And so far, this one is the dungeon that starts off with the energy dragons, but then it gets to more fiery dragons. But overall, this may end up being a week to sort of try and hard grind, but it's going to depend on your situation, really. Actually, do I have dungeon available? I do. I do indeed. So... You know, going back through some really basic dungeon stuff, ideally you'd use a lower level dragon to try and grind out the first, you know, say, 10 waves of dragons at least. It depends on what level your main team members are in comparison to the rest of your dragons. But, you know, if you have a lot of dragons at the same level, you can take advantage of that even more. And don't forget that lower level dragons do give bonus dungeon currency when you defeat an enemy. So rather than getting times one, you get times three. So that's the reason why you want to try and get as many hits with your lower level dragons. Just because bonus currency for doing the same thing, really. But again, it's mainly about logging in every six hours. Doing as many quests as you can primarily. Because don't get me wrong, in the first few resets you want to be getting a lot of KOs so that you can get the KO bonuses but depending on the KO bonus with the way the dungeon works it doesn't actually help you out that much. The first few are useful some of the later ones don't actually help depending on your team so keep all of that in mind when you are grinding the dungeon but quests 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 are 
the sweat dungeon thing. If you want to get the most value, most event currency, all of that sort of thing, make sure you are grinding. Like, this is kind of sucky. Defeat two dragons and perform nine weak attacks. But I do have Nezha that can do that. But I'd really prefer if my lower level dragons could do it instead. So, it's just one of those things. You can get really good quest RNG. You can get really awful quest RNG. It just depends on the flavour of the day. You know, I love RNG, right? Everything in DML is RNG. It's like you just have to get used to it. But, you know, keep grinding those dungeons out. And if you are going to gem the dungeon, do be aware that, you know, there's not too much longer left. So you've only got two weeks. But don't bank on the final dungeon being super nice because we don't know what rotation it's going to be next week yet. But, you know, anyone going for fun, Deju, I hope you get it. If you don't, it is what it is. But, um, you know, I don't know if I can be bothered <laughs> to grind so much this week, especially if you've got other stuff going on. IRL thing is other responsibilities, but, you know, you might as well give it a go. If you can get some more pieces for fun, Deju, at least then you can say, hey, look, I tried. I tried to do it. Game game wasn't nice. At least then, you don't really have to deal with other people saying, ah, well, if you just gave it a try, you know, because that's not really your fault. But, you know, we're finally at Ben now, which means we can get some actual KOs in. Thank goodness. I don't want to have metal up for this because I'd rather focus again on the quest now. But... Again, since I'm leveling up my main team members to help out in the arena as well, it does make dungeons slightly more difficult. It's like, if you have 12 dragons and then because of nightmare mode you recently upgraded or because of arena you upgraded, it will be more difficult for you to grind out quests. Now, it's your decision really whether you think it's worth it. I personally would rather be able to do both dungeon and the arena which is why it's important to me to be able to level up my dragons and still do dungeon. But if you are only a dungeon grindy person for whatever reason, maybe you want to tackle it differently. But all I can really do is wish you good luck and tell you to keep grinding dungeon. Even though dungeon can be very boring if you want the if you want the super super extreme godlike enroger or dragons of that quality you're gonna have to do some boring stuff <laughs> doesn't matter how many times i tell people it depends on your team depends how your team works in regards to that specific dungeon rotation and it depends on how much time you have to grind if you don't have the time to grind you're not going to see a lot of success honestly but you know, can at least I get a weak attack done, please? You'll see that we've got some energy dragons here, so really we should be checking what their um what their energy skill is. Power of Thunder, Power of Thunder, and Power of Thunder, for example. So we're okay this time, but it is something that you should really be taking into account whenever you do face energy dragons, just in case it's a burnout. If it's not a burnout, then I'm sure that you'll be happy. But you should really always check whenever you see energy dragons come up. Especially after last week. I'm sure a lot of people learnt to check what they were going against last week. But if you don't care, then YOLO. <laughs> Sometimes it actually ends up going a lot more successfully by just hamming damage. And just hoping that the enemies aren't going to do crazy things to you. Other times, if you don't check, it's like, yikes, I really, really should have tried to deal with that properly. But, depends on what you want to do. Again, I just sit here and occasionally show my dungeon run so that you can see roughly how I end up grinding things in the dungeon, the sort of quests I get. At least then you can have an example of, you know, how it is for me when I do dungeon things, which isn't going to be the same as everyone. Is my team in particular... I only have Erlang Shen because I needed metal to finish off the elements on my team. Nezha ideally would not be Nezha because it's actually better to split your shielder and your healer on a team when it comes to dungeon stuff. But 
you know, not everyone has that option. Because now, if I want to swap my Nezha out, I'll actually have to swap two dragons, which means I would have to replace both Nezha and Erlangshan, which means two more dragons at max level. Which, that's going to be a while now. So, keep all of those things in mind when you're doing things in-game, when you're planning your teams. Again, really, you can have an Ancient Healer, and they're not bad. Of course, the best options are going to be the Divine Ancient. It's always going to be the best option to go with those. But, if you don't have those available, and you're a pleb like everyone else, who really only has basic divines or ancients to go with, you can still make good stuff happen. You don't have to feel completely useless. You can still get things down. But, not gonna lie, it can be very boring. It can be indeed very, very boring. Some weeks grinding out the dungeon, but, you know, unnecessary evil. Am I gonna die here? Do I take... No, I'm not gonna take the risk. I shouldn't take the risk. We're not taking the risk. I definitely would have died there if I didn't put the less back on. See, I see a lot of newer players still getting confused as to why you need two divines in a team, and it is just simply because if you don't put a second, well, if you don't put the bless on before it gets to your dragon's turn, it will just be taken out immediately by the poison tick damage. So, you really don't want to suddenly see your dragon get taken out by tick damage. So that is very, very depressing when it happens and will immediately end your run. So always make sure if you can, you've got your shield up, you've got your bless up. And this is also a problem with Erlang Shen, because if I want to put the, the swords up, then I need to not be blessing that turn. So it's a lot of micromanaging your dragons I guess they're between all of their different attacks, abilities that they have, and I mean, that's what dungeons always been like really, but you do have to be mindful of a lot of different things, and maybe your team just isn't as suit suitable as someone else's. In which case, do whatever you can, don't take it too seriously, you know, if it doesn't work out for you, it doesn't work out for you, but you can always improve your team, there's no reason you can't. Just keep it in mind that you might not be able to do it straight away. Like maybe get some more ancient events in, get some more divine events in, and then when you've done that, maybe you'll see a lot more dungeon success later on. Of course I'd rather everyone just be able to use whatever the heck they want, but you know, I think we're coming towards the end of what we're going to be able to achieve here, but we can still probably get a couple more, couple more KOs in, but rather than put up a metal, I would rather, you know, bless this time, heal up, take the long route, and, you know, taking the long routes, grinding out more occasional KOs, you know, you can do that if you want to, I'm actually getting kind of bored. <laughs> Just as I was like, you know what, no, I'm actually going to do it, and I was like, nah, nah, come on, take me out, baby, do it, you know you want to enemy xylophone. No, he doesn't. I'll kill myself instead then, that's fine. But, again, see where you go in the dungeon. Even if you haven't been grinding the other dungeon weeks, maybe you'll start now, maybe you'll see some good success. Who knows? Who knows? But, again, you could open up every chest on your way to the purple one. Just don't open up some of the, la the last blue ones. But make your way over to the purple chest, open it up as many times as you can. Try and get Mr. Memorial. Because especially in a dungeon week where you need the dungeon dragon for a collection, it might be worth it to open like a few of the lower tier chests. But of course, if you open up 15 of them, you're guaranteed the dragon. The question is, can you get 15 dragons or 15 chest opens to get the dragon before you need to finish off the collection and hatch the dragons? So make sure you factor hatching time into the collection time because you might be able to get the dungeon dragon you might be able to get the dr the dragon of the week but can you actually hatch it in time that's the main question so 
For now, I do appreciate you joining me. I do hope for anyone that's still, you know, confused about dungeon weeks and how to do dungeon stuff, you know, again, don't just copy my team and be like, yeah, this is the best team in DML. That's not the reason I have this team. This team was like a hodgepodge of throw in what I can when I get it. But now that we've got a lot more dragon levels, it's going to be a lot harder to try and replace team members and also get arena stuff done in Ancient League. There's a lot of different factors. So say you have a Bahagia or some of the other Ancients, you're probably going to be a lot better off than me, for example. But the enemies do get scaled based on your dragon's actual stats. So, you know, that's a thing. I do also have two epic sigils, which I might end up YOLOing it in the final dungeon week at some point, just to see how it changes things. We'll see. We'll see when we get there. But, again, sigils, dragon strength, everything changes how your dungeon plays out. So, um, lots of stuff to try and get your head around with just the dungeon. Everything else is pretty simple. You know, log in, do the quests, get yourself pulverlays, whatever. That's pretty simple. The dungeon stuff and how the calculations work, that's a little bit more complicated and annoying. So, I don't blame you for going, ugh, ugh, that's annoying. But anyway, for now, I appreciate you being here. Thank you for joining me. I hope you get your hands on all of the dragons, debutante, some ancients, and other good stuff. But for now, thank you for joining me, and until next time, I will see you then.